If you know anything about Linux, you probably know how overwhelming it can be choosing the right version or distribution. I mean, look at the comments on this video where a small handful of people are only mildly upset that I didn't pick this one because it's for gaming, or this one because it's more of a stock experience, or, or this one because it prominently features Justin Bieber. <laughs> That's right, friends. Today, we are going to be scouring the darkest corners of the internet to find some of the weirdest Linux distros. And while some of them seem like stupid gimmicks, because they are, some of them have very good reasons for being the way that they are. And the first one is behind this Windows 11 PC that we're going to be using to compare the experience. Wait, there's nothing behind this. Take this. What? Windows was Linux the whole time? No, it was just a bit. <laughs> yes, it was. Meet Linux FX. It might look like Windows 11, sometimes in the very worst ways. <laughs> the good old control panel. But under the hood, it says Linux as any other Linux. Let's take it for a test drive. Um, OK, I guess we're getting right into it here. Welcome to Linux FX. <laughs> So while this is called Power Toys, it was based off an older version called Power Tools. But then they kind of got in some trouble because of Microsoft's licensing and like stealing the name, essentially. Uh -huh. I found out later that this Linux FX distro actually has had a lot of issues with basically just rebranding names and stealing IPs and stuff. Oh. So cute. they've tried to get around it by making it as similar as possible, but not interact the same way as possible. <laughs> cool. It's funny because they, they go out of their way to add basically what looks like the control panel and then don't make it work like the control panel at all. <laughs> okay. But hey, I can right click this and configure my network connections. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. This one I can interact with. This looks and feels about like the current iteration of the start menu for better or for worse. Yep. I can open Thunderbird mail. You want to know my favorite part? You know how I said that they were kind of getting in trouble for stealing things? Yeah. Go change the wallpaper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because this is obviously stolen. Yeah. Uh, OK. Yep. Do you notice there's one wallpaper in here that you might recognize? It's at the very top. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it ships with this? Yes. By default, when you install this, it includes this as one of the wallpapers and just calls it abstract lines. <laughs> Bro, why does this one exist? Well, if you want to convince people to join the freedom movement, you have to offer more than just the savings of not needing a Windows license or costly Apple hardware. You have to offer familiarity. And some distros, like this one, aim to do that through a combination of similar design and strong documentation and forum support. It's kind of a one-two punch of, come on in, the water's warm. Ooh, you can have swimming lessons with Brody. <laughs> Oh, I just heard we've got nine more of these to experience, including the Justin Bieber one. And I was like, segue, 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 oh, like segue, 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 no. MSI, with its one-piece perforated front panel, support for both AIO coolers and big beefy graphics cards, and patented DIY-friendly design, their MPG Gungnir 300R Airflow is the ultimate choice for gamers. Check it out at the link below, and be ultimate. If our first Linux was neutral good, willing to break a couple of eggs to make a freedom omelet, our next two are definitely chaotic evil. Bibian and Hannah Montana Linux, which were built on Puppy Lucid and Kubuntu, respectively. Let's start with Bibian, and I've been asked to wear headphones, which is troubling. So you can right click on the desktop if you want to look into some settings. Fire it up. Um, yeah. If you can't tell, this is very old by yeah. the picture of Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah, no tattoos even. No, fresh out of his baby face. Paint, I guess? Can you draw Justin Bieber? Oh my, um. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, the mouse sensitivity is a little funky, okay? Just stop. Sure, we'll blame the mouse sensitivity. <laughs> M. Oh, Canadian flag. I see where this is going. Our one Canadian artist. 
you're going to notice it's very stock. There's like not much to do. When this operating system came out, it was honestly meant as a joke. Yeah. You just plug it into someone's computer, you reboot their computer, <laughs> so the next day they go to work, they have Justin Bieber blasting music or... I can't hear any music though. Am I supposed to? There should be music coming out of this one. Oh, neat. Yeah. Again, also very old if you can't tell based on the picture of Hannah Montana. Yes, I think you mean Miley Cyrus, but yeah. No, that's Hannah Montana. She's like my age. She was a children's entertainer. Well, that's basically what you do now. Uh, I actually like this one over the Bebian. It feels a little bit more fleshed out as a desktop. Yeah, I think you could actually use this if you really wanted to, although you wouldn't want to unless you had really old hardware, I suspect. Which is fair enough, but given that's true of most Linux distros, you'd probably choose one that has unique features that have real-world benefits, like, say for example, Linux OS, a build for the visually impaired that is based on Ubuntu and features a screen reader to read off what the user clicks on or hovers over, as well as support for external braille displays. Uh, by the way, those are wildly expensive, but hey, if it means people who aren't adequately served by mainstream OSs can use a computer, that is absolutely great. Oh, there's a challenge. Because we've been having audio issues, let's make sure our actual screen reader works. Uh, okay. So just try clicking or hovering over something. Window. I just said window. Window. I see. Yes. This needs to be better. Yes. <laughs> Do you think that you could map Wannick with your eyes closed? <laughs> Window. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Okay, that's fair. It, In fairness, it wouldn't be intended to be used with your eyes closed necessarily. Uh, many people with visual impairments are, are, are able to see somewhat. Um, however, Window. this is just Window. not helpful. So I think the original developers started getting you to a point where maybe you could install this. Yeah. And then if you knew enough, get a couple more plugins to help you get there. Uh, but not, not as, of, as it is right now, it is not this very good. <laughs> it literally just reads off everything and it's very overwhelming, I feel like. This is the most Linux thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Panel. Page top list. Window. <laughs> Panel. Page tab list. Panel. <laughs> Clearly, Vinix wasn't able to reach the lofty goals of its creators, but I would be curious to know if there's anyone out there who is using Linux as an effective aid, whether it's with plugins or applications or another distro that you're aware of that's a little more ready to go out of the box. Let us know what you're doing with it and if there was a steep learning curve or if it was just something you could jump right into. Speaking of learning, Edubuntu. Education Linux. So Linux then. Their mission, as stated on their site, is to bring the freedom of the Linux desktop and the vast library of open source education software to the classroom. Blending both software and games, they aim to bring back the old feeling of going to the computer lab at lunch and trying to beat your friend's high score in math circus. You want to try okay, one of the games? I do. Yeah, so there's a ton. 100%. Games. Well, okay, there's okay, three. Those look like real games. Let's yeah. let, okay, Edubuntu. So there's some in mathematics. Mathematics, here we go, Tux Math. Let's yeah. go. I played this at work just to test it, and then I went home and played it for about another 30 minutes. Really? <laughs> arcade? Uh, yep, yeah. arcade game works. And then you can start with Space Cadet, that's just the first one. You can start with Ranger, that's the third one. Start with Ace, that's the fourth one. <laughs> All right, get ready. Okay. What, what, what? So you gotta, you gotta answer. Oh my God, who, I mean, who knows 19 times two out of the, oh. Oh, okay. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Whoa, that really quickly escalated. What just happened? Keep going. Whoa, okay. Eight minus negative 20. Jeez, let's go. Okay. Uh, oh, crap. That's not negative 16. Oh, there we go. Okay. I, I read it wrong, okay? Sure. Uh, so, so what is that? Negative 45? What the hell is 126 <laughs> divided by negative 9? Is there... Uh, what, what? Do the math. Um, is there irrational? Like, can I, is that a real number? Negative 14. What do you mean negative 14? You can't divide something by negative a number. Negative 60, um, um, minus 39. No, 29, oh. damn it. 
Oh no, look at Tux, he's running away. <laughs> Convert all. This is actually a really cool tool. You oh. can convert anything to anything. That's amazing. So from kilometers to grams. <laughs> I mean, doesn't mean it'll work, but it gives you the option to have anything. Apparently, one kilometer equals one gram. <laughs> so aside from games, it has those types of tools as well. I actually want you, I, I wrote it down here so I didn't mess up the word. Hold on. Can you find the ecliptic obliquity of the sun? <laughs> There's a dedicated app to help you find that. Of course there is. <laughs> but it might be a science. Yeah, um, okay, I just chill. <laughs> uh, I mean, the sun is definitely involved in whatever this is. Oh, it is this It app. is this app, but you kind of messed up by clicking on the lens. You need to actually click on the sun itself. Because what this does is it puts you in a geographical location close to you uh -huh. at the time of day where you're at. So not necessarily the same day. Uh -huh. And the sun will be in the appropriate position as really? to the date you are at or the time you are at. You can click on it and find a bunch of stats about it. It's actually kind of cool. Or <laughs> that's not as fun, Linus. OK, in all seriousness, I cannot see the sun right now. It's raining and miserable and cloudy. OK, the app has a purpose. Tux typing. Let's go. I can't read this. They are very spaced out. Oh my gosh. It's, re it's, it's actually hard. really hard. You go ahead. Uh, no, you can't no. even type. Yeah, he has to go over all my scripts. No, that's not it. I just mean you're slow. <laughs> if you read them for me, I can type them. Court. Okay. Flood. Food. Damn it. Stoke. Floor. Cello? Cello? Green. D <laughs> Damn it, Elijah. <laughs> Sorry, sir. It was actually pretty cool, the amount of apps they had. Yeah, and while you could make the argument that these simple apps could just as easily be loaded on a machine with Windows 95, it also includes more complex software to run basic simulations, calculators that can graph in 3D, and even electrical engineering programs to help you map out a PCB or circuit board. On to Red Star OS which first started development back in 1998, but has since had four major revisions, including updates as recently as 2019. What is Red Star OS, you might ask? Why, it's North Korea's operating system of choice. Based originally on Red Hat Linux, Red Star took on a more Windows 95 look before ending up, I don't know, old school Mac OS? According to a study back in 2015, Red Star OS is very tough to tamper with, as when it's connected to the internet, it will check for system changes and essentially brick itself in the event that someone tries anything it doesn't like, like gaining root access or deleting files. They also found that it tags Western or outside media that was passed around on USB sticks to help track its location and lock it out. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to test any of that since that would mean connecting this to the internet. And you know what? I think I'll pass. Uh, I still think looking into an OS like this is cool, though, because we can see where the priorities are for a user base that only has access to certain software. I see you managed to get some Western media on here. Yeah, when I was trying to test it, I was trying to test that tagging of the watermark because they found out it actually goes on the metadata of the file. But again, that only worked when connected to the network. And Wait, again, you did connect it to the network? No, I never connected it to the network. Oh, I see. So can I change the language to English or like? No, but you can select the country as Canada. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we can use Google Translate on our phone. Oh, right. Hey, look at that. There we go. Hey, in Korean, star is the same as star in English. <laughs> Is that just taking the image of the star and just making it a different star? I, I don't know. I don't know, but it's good. It's cool. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, OK. So, uh, ooh, computer information. Here we go. We have 3.45 gigs of memory. And yeah. now we know that. It essentially is just a stripped down system as well with an internet access. You have a web browser at the bottom, mm -hmm. a media player to be able to play media, just probably not Western media. Right. A calendar that has all the holidays stripped out of it. Right. It's just a calendar. <laughs> right, because why would you need holidays? Yeah, I don't need to know when, you know, July 1st is. Right. Wait, no, that's Canada. Oh, yeah, Canada. Yeah. Sorry, I, I thought it was America. You're not secretly American, are you? I have a couple challenges for this one. I'm supposed to try to delete a file, apparently. Yeah, so try to delete something that would be 
Integral. Yes. On the system, maybe an application or something. OK. You might have to use the Google Translate, and this might take a while. <laughs> Electron hydroxyl group. Sure. Also known Let's as a calculator. <laughs> uh, OK, well, let me see if I can figure out how to actually open a file browser. Like, can you? Yep. OK, all right, I'll find it. I'll find it. Oh, well, here, here, here. I can just cheat. I'll just take a file that oh. I already know. OK, yes, I would like a hint. Files are right there. Oh, my god. <laughs> so let's delete a default application. Siogwang office processing. Yeah. Time to go, buddy. A lot of the default apps will not even give you the option to delete. No thank you, sir. I simply will not. Oh, no. Oh, oh It just I'm... won't let you. Access is denied. OK. How did you manage to get it to brick itself? I didn't. That was the requirement for the internet. Right. If someone gains root access, it basically is pinging some home server. Right. That home server will go, whoa, something's wrong, and issue a command to reboot it at a stock state. Wow. So it turns out Linux is sometimes about the freedom and openness to oppress your citizens. Um, let's move on to something more positive, shall we? Suicide Linux? <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Is that that's a thing? Yes, sir. Technically, this is not a distribution like the ones that we've shown so far, but there was no way we were not going to include this. It's a Debian package that can be installed onto your OS that makes it so that if you mess up a command, any command, it immediately wipes your drive. And if you're wondering why this exists, you're not alone. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, it's actually based on an autocomplete function that was originally intended to help people who mistyped a really long command. Maybe they mistook the S for a dollar sign, and then it would actually help complete the command. Well, then user QNTM had a different idea. Instead, he had it just resolved to rm-rf slash, which means remove, recursive, so all of its subfolders, and force, meaning it doesn't ask for confirmation. Then that slash, that's the top level directory, so anything below that. Great, but that's how. I asked why. Fun? All right, what's the challenge? All right, I got three. You're allowed to use Google because you might not know the commands off by heart. Okay. Install an application. Okay. I want you to create a new folder somewhere. And then I want you to change your time zone okay. using the command prompt. Uh, sure. I made a directory. Cool. You want to verify? Uh, Navigate to it. He deleted something and then just retyped the exact same. Well, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm making really sure I don't screw this up. <laughs> uh, how to set or change time zone. OK. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is the point I'm making. There's some very, very long commands that you have to type out sometimes in Linux. Wait. Should, oh. should have deleted by now. It should have killed me. I didn't even notice I typoed that. <laughs> um, why do you think? Oh, it should have killed you. Wait, is it just a delayed death? It might be taking its time. I think I'm dying right now. Yeah. Yes, that looks very not great. <laughs> and as someone who has killed Linux before, what is the point of having a, oh. Um, hello? Let me tell you. Yes, do as I say. This is about what it looks like. <laughs> Stop. Can't believe that would happen so fast. <laughs> if you looked at that and went, dang, I am not into that kind of pressure. I gotta type everything perfectly or my stuff gets deleted. Maybe I'd be better off with something that doesn't save my files in the first place. Hey, we've got that too. That's where Tiny Core comes in. It is a 16 megabyte distribution that, yes, my friends, even includes a graphical user interface. To put that in context, the highest quality photos taken on a Galaxy S23 Ultra can be double that size for just an image. It also sits only in RAM and doesn't write to the boot drive by default, meaning that every boot just reverts back to its stock state. Now, of course, a prime use for this is loading everything up the way that you like it and carrying it around on a USB that you can take from computer to computer. 
And we've got a challenge for this one as well, right? Yes. So I'm going to plug in. <laughs> I'm going to plug in this USB. Mm -hmm. Wow, you already got it. That was really fast. I was going to say mount it, but I didn't even get to plug it in yet. Okay. Okay, 128 megabytes of RAM. I mean, realistically, anything newer than a Pentium 2 is going to have that anyway. So that's still pretty darn impressive. A lot of people actually use these types of OSs for like a POS system. Oh, that makes sense. Right? So it's picking up any mirror downloads to make sure your drivers and systems are up to date. Got it. Okay, it comes with terminal. Yep. And terminal. Yep. You can have any application you want as long as it's terminal. <laughs> Well, again, like you said, this could be used to save things directly to the disk. So theoretically, this could become a toolkit or, again, something you take to computer to computer. Very cool. We've talked a lot on this channel about being conscious of e-waste and using a lightweight distro like this can be a great method of extending the life of older hardware. Windows 11's minimum requirements for memory are 4 gigabytes. Here's a visual comparison showing you just how much 4 gigs is compared to the 128 megabytes that this device was able to run on. Now, while all the distros we've looked at today can be run as a live environment, meaning that you never have to install them if you don't want to, this next one is one you would pretty much never install, but it could be the most relevant one on this list depending on what you're into. System Rescue is a Linux that is intended to be run off a USB drive and comes packed with tons of tools to help you diagnose issues with your PC. Or if you're in IT, it can be a portable troubleshooting kit that you carry from workstation to workstation to help your clients when, say for example, their Windows install won't boot. It's got drive partition management, DD Rescue, which can help save data that may have been corrupted, Memtest for checking if your RAM is bad, rsync for backups, and lots more. Let's give it a shot. Well, I, what we're going to do is we're actually going to boot up to our Windows. I want to find our file here, and we're going to delete it. Then we're going to reboot into System Rescue and use that to recover my deleted files. Heck yeah. Show us how fat your fingers are. I don't get it. Like, what, what do you mean? mean? Like fat fingering? A... Oh, I thought you were just calling me obese. I was like, brother. <laughs> what? No! Okay. All these pictures are in our pictures folder. Yes, we can see that. I am going to shift delete them, which in Windows will permanently delete them, yes. not put them in the recycle bin. See you later, buddies. Oh no, technician. I deleted my pictures. Can oh, you help no. me? All right. First thing, hit that power button immediately. <laughs> that is correct, though, because if you rewrite over the data, you won't be able to recover it. That's right. By default, it is a terminal like this. It does come with a GUI if we just type start X. Uh, no space. You would have died in Suicide Linux. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the drivers you have installed, it might flicker like this. That makes sense. Oh, OK. Well, that's not what I did. Oh, OK. Well, hello. This is going to be our Windows basic data partition. So that's there. That's cool. We found the desktop. Yeah. So that's good. So I found this folder. <laughs> I, I, I kind of misled you, I'm sorry. Oh. This one actually doesn't have a GUI. But I'm saying the other applications that are on this does have a GUI. So let's open up our command prompt. So this is if you want to keep track of whatever you're doing. I do. Cool. So then you're going to want to find our drive. Yeah. And on this case, you're going to want to go to EFI GPT. Awesome. Mm. And now you're going to want to do advanced. That's if I don't want to chat with it. I just want to EFI with it. I was wondering who was going to make that joke. Uh, someone had to do it. You're going to want to go to undelete. There we go. Bad instructions, dick sucking GPU fan. I thought you called me a dick sucking GPU fan. <laughs> I was very confused for a second. I was like, what? Okay, well, break me, please. I found it. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now you can select using using the instructions below what you want to grab. No, oh, not the Snapchat data, though. Ooh, unselect that. You don't want that. It's just because the pictures were taken using Snapchat. That doesn't help my case. Editor cut that. It's pictures of my cat, I swear. Not. <laughs> so C to copy the selected files. Yeah, and now you can. Oh, I can copy them somewhere. Yeah. So I'll put them on the desktop. Sure. Did it copy everything? Yeah. So it actually copied it right now to a temp location on our USB drive. Mm -hmm. In this case, then we could remap our C drive as a file location here, and we could copy it back over. Very cool. That right there is why just deleting your files before throwing out or selling your hard drive is not secure. As long as nothing has been overwritten, 
they are still there. And using tools like this, they can be retrieved. Now, we don't have too much more to explore here that would be funny or experimental, but we will leave a download link for this one and all the other distros in case you want to try them. Which I guess brings us to our last distro. Elijah, what, oh, you're not even, what are you even doing? I'm installing our new distro, or our last one, I guess. All right, let's go. We're doing Ubuntu. Ubuntu. No, no, Uwu. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it cute? Uh, yeah, it's cute. I love it. This seems more modern. Yes. So this is, again is based off of Ubuntu. <gasps> a more modern. <laughs> you got a dogo. Dogo. <laughs> dogo. What? Isn't it dogo? No. What's well, like pogo? Yeah, but it's spelled with two G's. Isn't a pogo stick spelled with two G's? No. That would be pogo. <laughs> hey, which okay. is a completely different thing. <laughs> This OS actually, again, like you said, is more modern, more up to date. It also comes with a lot more. Okay, you don't need. It is. Oh, it is two Gs. Pogo, the opposite of poggers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's appropriate. That's a Twitch term. It's snake. Oh, it's snake. Oh, it's multiplayer snake. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. So I can't hit another snake either. No. Is this bone stock? It comes with Spotify and Steam and Qubit Torrent and no. all kinds of things that I definitely wouldn't use. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, no, it's not bone stock. And that's why it's just a little bit different. And this is what I'm talking about. I am cursed. This is a distro that comes with Steam pre-installed, and I managed to break it simply by trying to launch it. This seems like a very complete experience. Yeah, it even has Thunderbolt in the settings, Thunderbolt 3 support. Really? Using Ubuntu as its base, Ubuntu just adds some, a nice little theme and then comes with a bunch of apps that you'd probably download anyway. It also includes guides to help get you up and running, like the one that shows you how to enable the Proton compatibility layer for non-compatible games, so you can play pretty much anything you want on Linux. Big asterisk. Ubuntu was made by two students in Spain who wanted to try to have fun making their own distro. They started out just wanting to learn how to do it, and then it evolved into them creating something that they would actually want to daily drive, which, when you dig a little deeper and see how this distro comes out of the box, I get it. I mean, I'm not like an anime person or anything, but this already seems less overwhelming and in some ways more friendly than some of what's out there. Of course, there are a few things I would do differently, which, come think of it. How about we make a distro to call our own? That's a good idea. Leave some suggestions down below of what you'd like to see in an LTT distro and maybe, just maybe, we'll take a crack at Linus Linux. Linux. Elijah. <laughs> By the way, while you're down there, we know we haven't even scratched the surface of what's out there. Let us know if you've got a favorite distro that you'd like to see us check out in a second installment. All I need now is a segue to my favorite sponsor. We interrupt this video to clarify that, like his children, Linus loves all his sponsors equally, including Day One Journal. Journaling is great for creativity, capturing moments that matter and uncluttering your brain. But one of the most annoying parts of journaling is having to carry a physical book around with you everywhere and a pen. Day One is an app that gives you a fresh and easy way to keep and organize journals for all aspects of your life. Whether you're at an amateur wrestling show for a friend's birthday or just on a nature walk by yourself, you can capture these memories with written words, photos, videos, or audio clips in one place. Journaling can help you better understand your own brain and create new ways to navigate stress. And if you still need your physical journals filled on your bookshelf, Day One even offers Book printing. So try Day One Journal today. Go to dayoneapp.com slash LTT and use code LTT to start your two month free trial of Day One Premium. If you guys enjoyed this video, go check out the Linux challenge where Luke and I both switched to Linux as a daily driver for one month. And no, maybe it is not time we revisit that. Not yet. When SteamOS has broader compatibility, I'm gonna do it. <laughs>